So, I was, so um, this is kind of for your name, or for you, I don't know. It's for your name and for Sarah Jane's name. So I'm just going to stand over your equipment here and read this. I don't usually perform my own nights, but um, it seems apt. It's called Journey. I'm trying to rhyme the passage, in, passage of time and tell you the journey of Miss McInerney. How, after a while, and a trip down the aisle, she became Mrs. Chamberlain. I'll begin as I do in the beginning when boys turn to girls and men turn to women. Strange desires were up inside, and they're not scared of the word bride. Don't be surprised, don't be afraid, this was a time before you were made. When gentlemen didn't mean bog, and being a lady wasn't such a hard slog. Manners were better, people politer, children were good and much fucking quieter. Joseph and Nora, yes, those were their names, didn't know squat about video games. When she was little, she played who could stick, and when he was little, he thought cricket was quick. You get the idea of understanding the score, or should I continue and compare us some more? These two didn't hook up by chance. They met every week at their local dance. They talked very little, but danced quite a lot, and I'm sure at times it got pretty hot. I mean, in the summer and under the lights, not in his pants or in her tights. This was the time of courting and wooing, not like now with all the throwing and tooing. <laughs> when passion was something that just had to wait, and kisses were exchanged at her garden gate. Joseph was gentle, and Joseph was kind. Nora was patient, she didn't mind. Nora would laugh at the jokes Joseph told, and ever so slightly, Joseph grew bold. Nora would blush with her hand to her breast that Joseph would imagine the rest. Soon came a time when they would meet in a day for tea at her parents, I would probably say. A quiet affair when fathers decide whether their girls can become brides. Would he let Joseph take Nora away? He was, after all, the one with a say. It isn't like now in Britain today, where all fathers do is pay. If they can be found, and if they have thousands of pounds, their involvement is clear. Don't drink the whiskey, stick to the beer. Well, Father approved and shook Joseph's hand. And our couple saved and they planned, and as soon as you like, the big day arrived, and Joseph wondered how he'd survive the evenings he'd spent with his betrothed, so very close and still fully clothed. <laughs> Nora felt it as well, but by her demeanour you couldn't tell. Her mother, who loved her, had said that it hurt, so Nora had good reason to keep being curt. But Joseph was gentle and Joseph was kind, and when Nora looked in his eyes she would find love and affection, a sense of protection, a warmth from within. She knew what they had wasn't a sin. So she held Joseph close with a big Cheshire grin. The church was full, the priest at his altar. Joseph prayed that he didn't falter. A choir came down as the organ begun. The doors opened wide and let in the sun. Joseph turned to look at his bride and Joseph's face filled up with pride. As father and daughter walked down the aisle, smiling, Joe Chamberlain started to smile. And that's what it's like inside my head the day my grandparents wed. <laughs> 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 <laughs>